Hi, I'm Harlan Krumholtz, incoming editor of Jack, and I'm here with Renato Lopez, who's just published with his team a really remarkable article that we're proud to have in Jack that's focusing on precision decision making in patients who have atrial fibrillation. And I, I wanted to ask you, uh, Renato, this, this paper is helping people to, to weigh risks and benefits. Uh, what, what did you think was the most important thing that people found it, and how can they best apply it in practice? Uh, thanks, Har Harlan, for having me here. It's a great pleasure to participate in this uh, video. Um, and I think what we try to do really is to uh, have some results that can be applied immediately in clinical practice. And we know that chest vest score, for example, is a score that is uh, used uh, worldwide uh, to guide treatment on patients with atrial fibrillation, clinical atrial fibrillation. But we didn't know if CHADS score can also help discriminate and guide treatment in patients with subclinical atrial fibrillation. In other words, those atrial fibrillations that are um, detected through implanted device, like pacemakers and ICDs, in patients who are completely asymptomatic. So we didn't know that. So I think that's one of the major con contributions. We show that CHADS score helps us, can do a, a good job in helping us identify who might be the patients where oral anticoagulation, anticoagulation might have the greatest benefits. And what are the patients that maybe uh, we should not start anticoagulation right away and we should wait and monitor those patients until they develop um, clinical AF or until they develop longer than 24 hour duration of subclinical AF. So we show in the trial that the uh, chest mass greater than four are those patients that should definitely be treated, where the benefits outweigh the risk. We show that chest vest less than four uh, should probably not be treated because the risks uh, outweigh the benefits. And we show this interesting category of chest vest of four where um, it favored the treatment, but the risk of stroke overall was about 1% per year. So again, I, we say that our anticoagulation should be considered in that group, also take into account patient preferences and potentially even other things such as uh, biomarkers or even other um, echocardiography uh, uh, parameters. So I think that's kind of the major contribution to help physicians in a clinical practice uh, identifying who are the patients who are more likely to benefit from this strategy of anticoagulation uh, and who are the patients that we should probably wait until we start anticoagulation? Yeah, I really love this this study. You know, it, it's it's the kind of question people have in practice. This idea of what to do with subclinical. I mean, we often hear you know incidental finding. You should just ignore something. Of course, that happens in radiology. Is it important or not? Here, you're showing if you detect the atrial fibrillation, even if people aren't feeling it, it it has risk. I mean, you've right. shown that already. Now you're showing when you sit down with patients and make decisions about anticoagulation that we should be considering their underlying risk for each of these outcomes. And what I love what you did is you took the, the trial data, you took the data that you had collected, and then you said, can we understand this sort of balance of risks and benefits in people? And using a commonly used uh, stratifier, the chads vast score. Congratulations. Congratulations to you and your team. I know people are going to find this very interesting reading and, and something they can immediately apply in practice. So uh, anyway, we're, we're so happy to publish it and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much, Harlan. Uh, and I think that's exactly right. We wanna publish papers that are relevant and then can, and that can impact patients' life right away. And we hope this, this article will help physicians all over the world. Thank you. That's great.